If you're old enough to remember, Microsoft Power Toys were a free set of utilities available for both Windows 95 and Windows XP. After a long absence, Power Toys are back for Windows 10. In this beginner's guide, I'll walk you through the process to set it up and show you how to use each of the free utilities released so far for Power Toys. Let's dive right in. One might assume that Power Toys would be available to download from the Microsoft Store. In a strange move, it's not. Instead, you must go to the GitHub website to download the installer. GitHub, by the way, is now owned by Microsoft. They purchased them back in 2018. On this site, you'll want to navigate to the releases page. That web address is github.com forward slash Microsoft forward slash Power Toys forward slash releases. If you don't want to type that out, the link will be in the description. The newest release will be here at the top of the page. To download it, go to Assets and click the link PowerToysSetup.msi to save it to your computer. Find the location where you saved it and install PowerToys like you would any other program. Once installed, you'll now see the PowerToys icon in the system tray where you can change the settings for each tool. We'll have more on that later in this video. Let's start with the easiest first of the utilities currently available, which is the Windows Key Shortcut Guide. This will help you to learn the shortcuts used in combination with the Windows Key. To use the guide, hold down the Windows Key on your keyboard for about a second. You'll now see an overlay with the keyboard shortcuts that can be used while holding down the Windows Key. To the left, you'll see the controls to move individual windows along with the common shortcuts to the right. For example, if you wanted to open settings, hold down the Windows key plus the letter I on your keyboard. In addition, holding down the Windows key plus a number will display the program associated with that number in the taskbar. In this example, the Windows key plus the number 2 brings up the Vivaldi browser, and pressing those same keys again will minimize it. The next utility is the oddly named Fancy Zones. It allows you to define numerous zones on your screen to help improve your workflow and productivity with their handy snapping feature. To configure fancy zones to suit your needs, press the Windows key plus the tilde key on your keyboard. This is where you can choose your layout. You can choose a pre-made template or create a custom layout. For this example, we'll use the pre-made templates. To change the number of windows on your monitor, select the minus or plus key. I'll change it back to 3. Now select one of the layouts listed. For this one, I'll go with the priority grid. Here at the bottom, you can change the space around the zones. It's currently set at 16. You can lower or increase that number as needed. I personally think it looks better with no space between the zones. So I'll uncheck the box next to show space around zones. When you're done, click on apply. To enable these zones you just created, hold down the shift key while dragging a window and drop it in a zone. Let's put Notepad++ to the right. For this next one, we'll go with GitHub and drag it to the middle. And the final one will be Twitter, and I'll drag that one to the left. If you have a multiple monitor setup, you might notice issues with the zones being off-center, but it's still usable. This next one is called Power Rename. It lets you modify the file names of a large number of files at the same time. In other words, it's a bulk file renaming tool. Before you make any changes in the folder you're working with, go to the View tab here at the top. Over here to the right, make sure that file name extensions is checked. People have reported when this is unchecked, after making changes with Power Rename, the files lose their extensions, making them unusable. To begin, select the files you'd like to rename. In this example, I'll select all the image files in this folder. Right-click on any selected image. In the context menu, select Power Rename. In this instance, I want to replace img underscore in the file name with Hawaii. So go to the search for box and type img underscore. In the replace with box below, type the word Hawaii. In this example, none of these options need to be changed, so when you're done, click on Rename. 
That's all there is to it, and it's quicker than doing each one individually. Let's suppose you made a mistake renaming your files. Immediately afterwards, right-click in the folder. This will bring up the context menu and select Undo Rename. Let's now take a look at the various settings. In the system tray, click the Power Toys icon. In general settings, this is where you can enable or disable each Power Toy listed, with links to the right if you need additional help. Right now, there's only three Power Toys to choose from, with more coming in the future. Let's scroll down. You can choose whether you'd like for it to start up when you log in, and below that, you can choose between a light or dark mode for the Power Toy settings, or you can leave it on the system default app mode for your computer. In the Fancy Zone settings, this is another place where you can edit your zones. You can also change the Zone Editor hotkey if you want, with additional settings listed below. For me personally, I've been happy using the default settings over the past couple of months, so I can't advise on which settings you should change. It's all a matter of personal choice. In Power Rename, there are no settings to change, and the Shortcut Guide lets you change the length of time for the guide to show up when pressing the Windows key. The default is 900 milliseconds, which is just shy of one second. 1000 milliseconds equals one second. If you wanted to change it to two seconds, enter 2000 in the box. Below that, you can change the opacity of the overlay and the overlay color. Mine is set to system default app mode, which is already dark. Let's change it to light. When you make any changes, click save in the upper right. Here's what the shortcut guide looks like with the light overlay color. That's too blinding, I'm switching it back. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this beginner's guide and tutorial for power toys was useful for you. If it was, give this video a thumbs up and share with others. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date with the latest tutorials and other tech related stuff here on Tech Umbo.